Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm tackling part two of the kids' patio and putting together a small picnic table for them. The mud kitchen has already been a huge hit, so I'm really excited to get the picnic table out there for them and just make better use of that whole patio area. I did already start making a bunch of my cuts. Normally I don't film a bunch of that because it's, it's boring, but I realized with the picnic table there are some weird angles and so it might be helpful to kind of walk you through how, it, how I'm cutting at least the angled pieces. So let's start over at the saw. All right, I did already cut the legs, but for the sake of trying to explain what I did, we'll just like put it back together essentially and I'll try to explain it. So I just made my first cut at 30 degrees here. And then since these are parallel cuts, all you have to do is just slide your two by four on through to your correct measurement. And since they're cut parallel, the measurement is gonna be the same on this side and this side of the board. So these are, they're 26 inches here and on this side, cause it's, it's cut, you know, it's cut parallel. So just slide it on down, make your next cut, slide it down again, make the next cut, so on and so forth for all four legs. Now, since you have four cuts, the other thing that I like to do, it just makes it a little quicker, is I use a stop block. So I just cut this off at the 30 degrees and then I clamped it to my rail at the correct length. So really, really all you have to do is make your first cut and then you should just be able to like slide your two by four straight through, slide your two by four straight through till you have all four legs. Now I didn't cut the rest of the boards ahead of time before I remembered that I should film what the heck I'm doing. We'll just go back to normal now and I'll just show you as I'm going. The other kind of different angle cuts are for the tabletop supports and then the seat supports. So all I want to do is just cut the corners off of them so that it's not quite as sharp because that's going to stick out right under the tabletop and the seat supports. So just make it a little bit smoother. So I'm just going to measure about an inch. I guess that works. <laughs> yeah, we'll do an inch down on each one. And then I'm just gonna cut this corner off at 45 degrees. Using the same finish I did on the mud kitchen so we shouldn't shouldn't have another episode where I have to re-sand everything and start over. Hopefully. I missed last words, right? It's the same color though, so it should be fine. I used a staining sponge when I was putting it on the mud kitchen, but I thought I'd try a roller this time and just see if it goes a little bit quicker. I decided to pre-finish all the boards again, same as on the mud kitchen, because once the picnic table is together, you know, it has a lot of like small gaps in the tabletop, in the bench seats, and then there's lots of nooks and crannies, so it's just easier to finish them ahead of time and not have to worry about it once it's already assembled. I'm just doing all the sides at once. I'm not too worried about uh, getting, if it has like little marks in it. I have them balanced over here on a couple scrap boards. I'm not worried if that leaves like a couple marks along the bottom. No one's ever gonna see it. It'll be on the bottom of the whole table. Plus, again, outdoor project. Doesn't have to be quite as fancy schmancy. Okay, pro tip slash like just kind of lazy painting tip. Um, when I'm using trim rollers like this, if I have like low spots or somewhere that I just kind of need to like push the stain into or even paint, I do this on like doors when I'm painting doors too. Um, a lot of stain gets stuck in the end of it. And you can kind of just do one of these and push the stain down in and then just make sure you roll over the top of it 
not to get any bubbles or drips or anything like that. And it works really, really well on the end grains too, because the end grain just needs more finish on it because it's so porous. So if you kind of use the end of the roller, you can push more stain right into it. The biggest thing is you just want to check them for drips uh, around the edges and make sure that you roll them so that that's all even. Probably not like technically how you're supposed to do it, but I do it all the time and so far so good. Okay, since I'm gonna build this on the workbench here, I'm gonna use this two by six board as just kind of imitate what the ground would be like so that I can make sure I have the legs set at the correct angle. So the board is just so that I know that the leg isn't you know, too straight or too angled. It's just kind of imitating what it will be like once I set it on the ground. So I just wanna make sure that the angle is flush against this two by six. And then I cut another scrap two by six at the correct height for where I want the seat stringer to come across. So I'm just going to use these to kind of position everything and then it should be good to go so that once it stands up, everything's in the correct um, level spot. Just easier to build it on the workbench like this than to try to build it standing up, in my opinion. I guess if, if you assemble it different ways, it might be easier to do it on the ground, but putting it together in this order this just makes the most sense in my head. <laughs> uh, it works really well to use these extra scrap wood shims. There's always a million ways to build everything. So just whatever makes the most sense in your, in your head. I just share how I do things, but it is not one size fits all, that's for sure. There's one. Okay, actually I changed my mind. I think this is gonna make more sense. I'm gonna put two sets of legs together first, then we'll put the tabletop on. This way we'll be less measuring and more just building everything to fit. Before I put the legs together though, I'm gonna put these two by twos on the tops of each of them and I can attach it here to the legs and then when I'm ready to put the tabletop on I can attach all my tabletop boards from the bottom here so I don't have any screws going through the top of the tabletop or at least that's the idea. Double.
Okay, now we'll do the tabletop. You guys want to test it out? Yeah. All right. Last few finishing touches. I found this. Hi. Yeah, we're going to add an umbrella to the picnic table. Yeah. I know. It's going to be so cool. So I found this on Amazon. There are quite a few kids picnic tables that come with an umbrella, but I couldn't find many replacements or just uh, any umbrellas that were, they, there weren't a lot of options for umbrellas that were small, like for a kid's picnic table, but I found this one and it's only five feet wide, so I think it'll work. It's just a little tall. So since there's a gap in the tabletop here, there's not a good place for the bit, the circular bit to grip onto to start. So I'm having trouble getting it to stay in the correct place. So I think I'm just gonna use uh, the jigsaw to cut this part out. Okay, just use the hacksaw to cut off the end of the umbrella here. Is it a good size? All right, that's gonna wrap it up for the kids' patio. I know the pool is looking a little bit dilapidated. Um, I picked it up from the grocery store last year. So all things considered, it's actually held up pretty well. The bottom two rings are starting to lose air kind of quickly now, but it's still holding water, so. If you want more details on the mud kitchen or the picnic table, head on over to my website. I'll throw that link down in the description below. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today, and I will see you next time.